Judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen. I want to use for a subject this morning, committed to the course. Commit to the course. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, and we bless you for what our eyes have already seen, what our ears have already heard. We thank you for the indwelling of your spirit that speaks to our hearts and has us to know that you are still on the throne. We thank you, God. We ask now, Master, that we have moved to the hour of the preached word, that your spirit will remain, send the preacher, we pray, that your people might hear that they, the Lord, might be edified in their journey, and that you, O oh God, might get the glory. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Commit to the cause. <clears throat> Amen. A couple of Sundays ago, we focused on our theme for the year. Y'all remember the theme for the year? Yes. Come on, tell me what it is. Church committed to God. Church committed to God. Amen. And in our attempt to say something about the theme, I preach the sermon entitled Making a Commitment. We looked at Jacob in the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis uh, when he was sleeping, woke up from a dream and said, Wow, God is in this place. And then how he made a vow after that. And from Jacob's experience, we learned that we too ought to make a vow. Number one, we ought to affirm God as our God. Y'all remember that? That we need to make this thing personal like David made it personal. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leaves me beside him. Make it personal. That we ought to, number two, convert our home into God's house. Amen. 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 
that we ought to anoint it, that we ought to have an altar there. Uh, it, is, it is in that place uh, that we should uh, uh, lift our prayers to the Lord and, and call that place Bethel, the house of God. And finally, we said our vow should include uh, a statement to honor our God with our treasure. Yes. That is to give God a tenth, a tithe. In that same vein, on Wednesday night, Bible study, we've been looking hard at ourselves, looking to determine our health. And the study has made it clear that if we are to maintain our health, strengthen our health, that we individually need to make a commitment. Amen. I wish more of us would come out on Wednesday night and help us in our discovery. We got a pretty good turnout. But I would love to see everybody there on Wednesday night as we discuss us. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to continue our discussion about commitment. The text this morning is a very familiar text. It's one that we hear often at home going services when a man or a woman of God have completed their earthly journey and have gone on to be with the Lord. But as I read it today, I want us to recognize that uh, it was not written as an epitaph, but as an instruction to a young, vibrant minister on how to live, how to lead, how to commit and stay the course during perilous times. Amen. And it seems to me that Paul's wise counsel to Timothy uh, may be of value to us as well. A church with an aging congregation, an aging pastor, amen, in an Ephesian-like city, while clinging on to traditional Christian values. I believe that Paul helps us answer the question, how does a small 69-year-old urban ministry with only a handful of faithful members survive at a time when there is a great falling away from the church, Jesus. a period when seasoned saints are transitioning and young folk are not rushing in to fill the void. Tell us, Paul, what advice do you have for this pastor and this church anxious about its, predic its predicament and future prospects? What say you, Paul, as we peer darkly into our destiny? Is there a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I can hear the Apostle Paul saying in this text, just as you made it these 69 years leaning on the Lord, mm -hmm. you'll make it 69 more if you continue to rest in his word. Okay. It was the word of God yeah. that brought us through the rough patches of the ministry in the 1950s and in the 1960s, when this, this city was a hotbed of racial unrest, it was the word of God that sustained you as parishioners fled the city and gentrification began to creep in and change the face and the tenor of our community. It was the word of God that brought us through turbulent economic times at the turn of the century when banks were foreclosing on homes as well as on churches. It was the word of God that upheld us when loved ones passed away and left us to fight all alone. But when our bodies uh, uh, betrayed us and sickness shook us to the core, it was the word of God that reminded us that by our stripes, by his stripes, come on, we are healed. So I just stopped by this morning to remind somebody that, that, that in times like these, our worship and our praise, our service and our commitment is assured if we just hold on to the word of God. I saw something that disturbed me this morning on that Facebook thing. I, I did. I think that Facebook thing is good and it can be bad. Yes, sir. I saw something just this morning from a dead preacher, Reverend Ike, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. talking about how prayer 
is an internal communication between your conscious and your subconscious. That you are only talking to you. What? Come on now. Now how long I've been dead? 20, 30 years? Maybe more than that? And here he, Amen. And here his false doctrine is still making his way across the enemy. head. a million plus hits. Jesus. And I look at some of the comments behind that stuff. And for, finally somebody is telling the truth. We got to do our job mm -hmm. to make sure the true word mm -hmm. goes forward. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 It's in the text. No the first duty of the church is to make disciples. Yes, that's right. And how do we do that? Beginning at verse 1, Paul says, Pastor, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead and his appearing and his kingdom preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said preach reverence. Preach the unadulterated word of God and preach all of it. From Genesis to Revelation preach the word of God. He said tell them in the day this beginning, God stepped out of nowhere, reached back into nothing, and threw out everything. Amen. Tell them that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Tell them that the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Yes. The glory as the only begotten son of the father. Full of grace. And full of truth. Tell them. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as have received him. To them gave he power. To become the sons of and the daughters of God. Yeah. Tell me that he was wounded for our transgressions, yeah. that he was bruised for our iniquity, uh -huh. that the, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, yes, and by his stripes right. we are healed. Yeah. Paul says, you got to tell them, Pastor, tell them. that they hung him high, uh -huh. that they stretched him wide, right. that they nailed his hands and his feet, uh -huh. and he died. In that great getting up moment, yeah, yeah. every knee shall bow, yeah, yeah. and every tongue shall confess yes. that he is the King of Kings, yes. and that he is the Lord of Lords. Yes, yes. Paul says you got to preach that, yes. Pastor. Yes. Preach it in season, preach. Preach. and preach it out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering mm. and doctrine. For the time is coming when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves perpetrating preachers and internet teachers mm -hmm. having itching ears. Mm -hmm. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Mm -hmm. If the church is going to remain committed, mm -hmm. if it's going to stay the course, yes. you have got to preach the gospel. Yes. And that same Paul that gives us this instruction is the same Paul that wrote up there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Mm -hmm. But unto us mm -hmm. which are saved, mm -hmm. it is the power of God. Yeah. For it is written, mm -hmm. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Mm -hmm. 
and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So preach, Pastor. Preach. By this you help the ministry in its commitment to stay the course. And I'm reminded this morning, church, mm -hmm. that all the preaching is not supposed to be done by the pastor. Right. Amen. Right, right. Everybody up in here <laughs> has got to do some preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now I can tell by the look on a couple faces, you say, well, he ain't talking to me. He talking to Gibson. He talking to, to them deacons. But I beg to differ. Amen. 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 I'll tell the The Bible says that everyone who confesses the name of Jesus as their Lord and Master is a baptized believer of the church. And the last time I checked Matthew 28, 19, it still said that the Lord Christ commissioned the church, that's you and me, to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. It's our duty, come on, as brothers and sisters in Christ to tell somebody of the goodness of Jesus. The psalmist said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if you have been redeemed, it's your job. Right. To tell somebody in your club, right. tell somebody in your Zumba class, Woo. tell a neighbor, tell a friend, uh -huh. tell somebody on Instagram, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. tell somebody uh -huh. that God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten yes. son, yeah, yeah. that whosoever would believe on him yeah. would not perish, yeah. but have everlasting yeah. life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell them. And it's all right if you don't speak that way. Okay. Amen. Because the most effective sermon you will ever preach will be the sermon that you live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. But for some folk, you'll be the only Bible that they ever read. Mm. And the discerning individual will judge you not by your testimony, wow. not by your words, not by your Sunday go to meeting clothes, yeah, yeah. but by the life that you live. Yeah, yeah. And rest assured Amen. that somebody is always watching yeah. and always listening yeah. to your sermon. Yeah. They'll be watching to see if you got the joy of the Lord uh -huh. when things are going good uh -huh. and when things are going bad. Are you singing praises to God when your home is flooded, mm -hmm. when your community is decimated by violence uh -huh. or by fire? Uh -huh. They are watching to see if you're still blessing the Lord yes. when your money is low yes. and the snacks man is sneaking yes. around yes. your house. Uh -huh. Are you still telling folks that I serve an awesome yeah. God yeah. when you are in the valleys of life, sacked of your strength and yeah. unsure yeah. of what you should do yeah. next? Yeah. 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 Church, in those times, yeah. 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 you yeah. stay on the wall yeah. and you keep fighting the good fight of faith. Right. If in those times you keep on worshiping and yeah. keep on praying and keep yeah. on believing, yes. keep on living a glorified life in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. Guess what? You preach it. Uh -huh. Amen. And somebody is listening and going to want what you got. Yes. Amen. 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 To stay committed. Yes. To stay the course. Paul said preach. Yes. But not only that, Paul gives further instruction. Uh -huh. In verse 5, Paul says, but watch thou mm -hmm. in all things. Yeah. Endure afflictions. Mm -hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Make full proof of your ministry. Mm -hmm. Now we could spend the better part of this hour on that verse alone, but since y'all got to sing somewhere else. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. I'll just touch on one of Paul's suggestions. Leave the rest for another day. Amen? Amen. 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 Paul says that if you're going to be committed and stay the course, yeah. you're going to have to learn how to endure affliction. Right. You're going to have to learn how to embrace suffering. Come on. Amen. 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 Suffering comes with the job. Yes. Suffering is to ministry 
like peanut butter is to jelly. Come on. Amen. You can't have one without the other. In fact, it's not until you put them two things together that you come to appreciate the richness right. of your God experience. Right. Yeah. It's true. Right, right. It's true. Look at Romans 5, 2 through verse 4. It says, uh, in the New International Version of the Bible, Paul says, We stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Yes. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. knowing that tribulation mm -hmm. uh, uh, work of patience, mm -hmm. and patience, experience, yeah. and experience, hope. Right. In other words, unlike the carnal man, who views suffering as a curse to the spirit man. Yeah. Suffering for the cause of Christ blesses us yeah. by drawing us into a deeper yeah. relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the closer we get to God, yeah. the stronger our faith becomes. Yeah. 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 And the stronger our faith becomes, the harder it is for anybody or anything to knock us off course. When the Holy Spirit dwells within us, yes. suffering gives yes. birth to patience. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't believe me. Yes. Ask Job. Uh -huh. Job would tell you that he did not learn patience yes. in his prosperity. Right. Uh -huh. But he learned it while he was sitting among the ashes yes. and mourning the death of his seven sons and three daughters. Uh -huh. He didn't learn patience while amassing his wealth. But he learned it when all of his cattle, all of his camel, all of his oxen had been taken and all of his servants had been killed. He did not learn patience in the arms of a good wife. No, but he learned it as he sat in pain with his body covered in boil from his head to his toe. He was, he was down to nothing, but he learned to wait on the Lord. Us hope. 
Hope that our parents suffering, our present suffering, yes. are not worth comparing yes. with the glory huh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. For in this hope, mm -hmm. huh, we are saved. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. It is our hope yeah. and our faith in Christ Jesus uh -huh. that will enable us to stay the course. Yes. Church, don't get weary That's right. in well doing. Yeah. Keep hope yeah. alive. Yes. Is there anybody here willing to keep hope alive? Yes. Is there anybody here yes. willing to keep hope alive? Yes. Do you have hope in the Lord? Yes. Do you have hope in His yes. Word? Yes. Do you have hope in His grace? Yes. Yes. Hope in His mercy? Yes. Hope in His power? Yes. Hope in His strength? Yes. Hope in His strength? Yes. Hope in His resurrection? Does so anybody here have a hope in yes. Jesus? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 